Good morning, my blessed brothers and sisters. I'm going to start by reading uh, the daily devotionals. I've been posting up on the thing, so if you've read them already, that's okay. Some of you may not have because you only listen to videos. I don't know. But I'm going to read them to you because they're significant to me right now, and then I'm going to talk about what they mean to me right now, and hopefully it will help somebody else out there too. So I'm going to jump back to November 3rd first, and again, I apologize. My head will be down because I'm reading. Every time something thwarts your plans or desires, use that as a reminder to communicate with me. This practice has several benefits. The first is obvious. Talking with me blesses you and strengthens our relationship. Another benefit is that disappointments, instead of dragging you down, are transformed into opportunities for good. The transformation removes the sting from the difficult circumstance, making it possible to be joyful in the midst of adversity. I think I'm just going to go ahead and read both days and then we'll talk about it. But this is still on the third. Begin by practicing this discipline in all the little disappointments of daily life. It is often these minor setbacks that draw you away from my presence. When you reframe setbacks as opportunities, you find that you gain much more than you have lost. It is only after much training that you can accept major losses in this positive way, but it is possible to attain the perspective of the Apostle Paul, who said, compared to, surpassing, compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, I consider everything else that I once uh, treasured to be as insignificant as rubbish. Amen. Now, uh, a couple days later, and I believe, yes, it was today's, you can live as close to me as you choose. I set up no barriers between us, but neither do I tear down barriers that you erect. People tend to think that their circumstances determine the quality of their life, so they pour their energy into trying to control those situations. They feel happy when things are going well and sad or frustrated when things don't turn out as they had hoped. They rarely question the correlation between their circumstances and their feeling. Yet it is possible to be content in any and every situation. But put more energy into trusting me and enjoying my presence. Don't let your well-being depend on your circumstance. Instead, connect your joy to my precious promise, promises. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. I will meet all your needs according to my glorious riches. Nothing in all of creation will be able to separate you from my love. So, to me, this has all kind of come together along with some other uh, sermons I've been listening to by Jim Baker and some other information I was reading, and, and it is all pointing to the same thing, and it all tells me the same thing, and I think right now, before I go and explain the rest, I'm going to uh, say a prayer for us all that I think kind of says what I'm trying to sum up. Dear Lord, thank you for all your many blessings you give us continuously, those we're aware of and those we are not. You know our hearts, and you know that we wish nothing more than to have a great connection to you and to have you guiding our lives because we know we can't where you can. We ask you mostly, Lord, that you give us eyes to see and ears to hear, that we may constantly be in touch with that small voice that you have put inside of us so that we can be connected to you at all times, in all circumstances, all the days of the rest of our life. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. So if you didn't catch it in that prayer, what's been coming to me time and time and time again, I, I'm working on trying to write a book right now, I'm trying to work on other things, plus you have your normal uh, things that just happen in life, and as I told you a few days ago, I found myself frustrated, tense, uh, going off, which I have not done in a long time like that, or felt like that in a long time, and uh, the devil made me do it. <laughs> It's things of this world, seriously, that distract us from keeping that constant communication with the Lord. Um, I took yesterday off, pretty much, most of the day of doing anything uh, along the lines of what I'd been trying to do, and just kind of sat back and waited, and, 
had a walk this morning and had a much better communication with the Holy Spirit than I've had in a while. And uh, <clears throat> I, I think it was telling me I needed to take a break and calm down and quit trying to do things at my pace and do it at his pace and to listen to him and let him guide and direct me, which I really, really want to do. But it's really easy to let things of the world come upon you and uh, keep you from having that connection. So for what it's worth, uh, I think it's helped me tremendously. I hope it helps everybody else to remember any time something happens that is not bad, I mean, if something happens that's bad or frustrating or giving you trouble, that's just a sign to stop right there and know this is God saying, here's another one of your lessons that you need to go through to be able to constantly connect with the Holy Spirit. What are you going to do? You're going to get frustrated. You're going to say, you know what, Lord, I see it. This is a blessing. I, I get it. What lesson do you want me to learn from this? And as we get better and better at handling those things and stay in calm and stay in connect with the Lord and letting him direct it, uh, direct us in which way, then we're going to be able to handle bigger and bigger lessons and challenges until we can actually bring the kingdom of God right down here on earth inside of us and help spread it. That's what I get out of it for now. Feel free to comment. I hope everybody's having a blessed day, blessed life, and you can bet you'll be hearing from me again.